Hi everyone, how are you doing this morning or afternoon? Because we're getting close to lunchtime. Good. 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 So I'm Hannah and I'll be taking you through the second half of the Challenging Messages workout today. Um, so just to recap, uh, in the first part of the session with Jay, we got introduced to uh, the purpose of the workout around delivering the messages painlessly, um, looked at the foundations for why our communications can sometimes be unsuccessful, and then introduced uh, the model as well as reflected on our own situation. So for the second half of today, um, I'll give you a chance to practice some of those skills and new techniques we've just been introduced to, um, and then also look at the reactions you might get and what's the worst that might happen, and then reflect that back in your own situation. <laughs> but before you get a chance to try and implement some of these techniques, just a little bit about myself. Uh, so I'm the Talent and Development Specialist here at NERSC FA Pacific and um, I've been with the company for two years but while up I've worked in HR for about 12 years. And most of my HR experience has been as an HR business partner. So in that role I've not only had to deliver a lot of challenging messages but I think in HR you get a bit of a unique situation that you get to sit in the room with managers as they sometimes deliver those challenging messages. And that's been a great experience to have for my own learning as being an observer. And when I've been in these meetings with managers, my thought processes, listening to what they're saying, have ranged from, oh, this isn't going well. And here's where I step in so we stay out of court. To um, listening to the manager deliver the message and going, I know I'm meant to be here supporting you, but wow, I'm learning from you here. Like, the way you're handling this is amazing. So what I've taken away from that, that often what's the most memorable and what has the biggest impact is not the message itself, but how it was delivered and then what happened next. Because when it comes to delivering challenging messages at work, it's the what happens next, that um, whether you do feel empowered, as we say, how the relationship is afterwards, that has the impact on how you go away um, from hearing that message. So I know we're all leaders in the room, but I want you for a moment to take off your leader hat and just be you. And while you might be delivering challenging messages throughout your lives, you've also received plenty. They might have come from your manager, from a recruiter, a doctor, the tax department, the cashier who says, I'm sorry, your credit card's been declined. So I want you to think for a moment about the challenging messages you've received. And can you think of situations where, when the person's delivered it, they've done it so well that even if the situation was hard, you felt cared for, you walked away knowing what your options are, or, or in, on the opposite situation, have you ever walked away and thought, and, and, and realized that the way that you were told the message has really just blown up the problem, exacerbated it, you don't want to deal with this person ever again. They're a horrible person. And so reflect for a moment, and then I'd like to hear, and you don't have to share the situation if it's a personal one, but is there anything you can think of that either someone has done particularly well or particularly badly, something they said or their approach that really stuck with you in how you received a challenging message? Let me share one. This happened in the I don't know if you all knew, in India we had this demonetization happening, right? Mm -hmm. Um I had a situation where my father unknowingly had kept a lot of cash, all these notes with him, uh, not realizing that he may not be able to use this note anymore. So that in the, all the banks were loaded, they were loaded with people standing in queue and things like that. It was very difficult and I was in the last two days where we can go and give this currency and change it to the currency which is affected. And suddenly my father comes up with a load of cash <laughs> with him and I said, I said, Dad, you have so much money with you, I never knew. And, but, but it's no more useful because those notes are no more uh, useful, right? It was difficult for me to handle it. So I'm one of the premium customer because of maybe our salaries and things like that. So I called up my uh, manager, relationship manager and I asked him, how can you help me? because I can't go stand in this queue. It's, um, it's difficult for me to stand over there and because my working day will go and all that. This one guy, he is supposed to help me out. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. I'm talking about a situation that didn't go well with me. Mm -hmm. He's supposed to be helping me out because he's my relationship manager. But he kind of the way he reacted to me was, oh, sorry, ma'am. You know, in today's situation, only with two days to go. I have like you. I have many more to be handling. I'm also relationship manager to them. Is it okay that uh, you know I can help you part of it and not a part of it? I said, then what will happen to the part of the money which will not be useful? I'm sorry, I don't know how I can help you. Maybe you should try and see some better way to do it. Maybe you get more people to stand in the queue. Maybe you get your uh, driver. Maybe, you know, he's giving me all those reasons, but he never came up to tell that he can help me or he can appoint somebody else to do it for me. So that's one situation. So I got really paranoid. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what to do. I walked up to the bank myself. Mm -hmm. I went to the manager and I had cut the queue, of course, because of the situation. And I said, I'm sorry, I need your help. Take your bank, do whatever you want, take your bank. But this money has to be converted to the currency that you used to. To my surprise, that manager, of course he couldn't do that same day, but the last day, I said two days were there, right? The last day he gives me a call and says, Jayanti, you can come and collect the note which you can. So that means there was a possibility that can be done. But this guy did not want to do that. Yeah. So thank he you didn't. <laughs> for sharing that story. And <laughs> seeing the passion coming across, it's yeah. the way that that situation was handled that's more memorable to you yeah, than the situation itself. Like, you know, there's an issue happening with demonetization, that can't be helped, but the way it was handled is what sticks in your mind and Correct. feeling disempowered perhaps that you're not being helped. Anyone have an example of where it went well that they'd like to share? Yeah, airlines, uh, I have experienced uh, when the flights get cancelled and you know we were in Mumbai and there was a deluge when rains uh, you know happened continuously and the airport was flooded and I was traveling with my child and uh, uh, but it was intercity uh, and uh, it was difficult to get to the airport but because it was raining we went many hours earlier. And the airline, uh, there were obviously multiple lines, but the one that we flew with, uh, I just felt that they managed that whole situation. We were in the airport for eight hours, uh, but I felt that they managed the situation really well. So they took care of giving us messages on time. They took care of our food. Um, they knew I was with a child, so I had somebody continuously coming and checking with me if I need help or you know, anything that I could, they could do to offer help. And uh, even though we flew late, but just because of the way they managed that entire crisis, uh, and especially this one person who always kept, and they knew I can't come to the board because my child is there, I can't leave her alone, and this one person kept coming and telling me that there's still two hours to go, so if you want to take rest or eat something, you can do that. Then one, once, when I had to go to the washroom, the person also offered to wait uh, with my luggage and my child, and I went to the washroom and came back. So. Sometimes people just go a little bit extra, right? Yeah. So I think, like you said, the person and the how. Yeah. So right. So the message was challenging. You can't fly. Yeah. But then feeling cared for, yeah. getting the right communication, and as much being controlled as was possible, made it a far more positive experience yes. than it otherwise could have. You can't help the situation often in challenging messages, but it's how it's managed. Yeah. So I'd like you all to. Think about that as we are now going to get a chance to uh, have a go at practicing some challenging messages. And the way we're going to do that is through a game. And you're going to work in two teams and to get the energy up on a Friday afternoon, it's a competition. <laughs> so let's, co let's get into those competitive issues. Oh, sorry, I sit down for a second, that was just me using. <laughs> um, but in a moment, um, I will ask you to pick teams and think about it. It's a competition. You want to pick the best team. So there's a lot of different things we bring to the table and the game is going to be about different, working through different situations around challenging messages oh, okay. that let you practice those skills. So we all have different things we bring to the table. So you want uh, and you get the chance to pick your team here. So I want you to think about uh, who you might want to work with today. And the first part of this process is going to be about um, having a chat to each other to finding out so you can, so you can pick your team members. So um, I'll get you to shortly uh, stand up and have a chat to each other uh, and, um, and think of, so you can get to know each other a bit more and think about who you want to work with. So before we do that, can you think of any questions you might want to ask someone 
if you to, to help you to choose if you want them to be on your team. That will help you to decide if they're a good match for you. So sorry, just um, asking. So the point of the challenge is that you want to win by delivering a good challenging message. I'll give you a little bit more details later, but yes, you'll be working through some challenging message okay. scenarios. Yes. Hmm. I would ask the experience of that person handling challenging messages yeah. before. to do so firstly I will hand out some oh, notepads and what I'll ask you to do is um, when you meet someone to write down the person's name and any you know top things you want to remember and then at the end I will ask you to circle the two people that you want to work with and then I will try and accommodate everyone's preference. So um, you have six minutes and I will ask you to meet, try and meet four people in that time, so you can you can pick two. We're only allowed to ask the three questions. Uh, you can ask a couple of others their suggestions, but what do you think will help you to um, figure out who you want to be on your team? So please stand up and start getting to know each other. Yes. Um, yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, what's your experience? Uh, uh, the situation. Uh, and then we yeah. uh, uh, yeah. 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 Oh, you have to. Yeah, they just yeah. 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 How many partners? How many partners? How many how do you actually communicate, opening lines, speaking, preparation, Okay, we're halfway, so try and move on to your third person soon, oh, please. How much experience have you got? Have you had experience? 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 Have you
activity is where I get to deliver a challenging message to you. I've tricked you a little bit. <laughs> this game was not about who you want to work with. It's actually about who you don't want to work with. And this is where you get a chance to practice a challenging message. So you have some good data points here about um, the, person, the people you've spoken to. Uh, and, and why you think certain people made the best choice for your team. So now I'd like you to spend five minutes and pick one of the people that you've chosen not to be on your team and prepare to deliver a message to them as to why you haven't chosen them. And in that preparation time, please, you can look at your handout and these are the tools that we went through with Jay. So prepare in three minutes your conversation with the person, with one of the people you did not choose to be on your team. Okay. Any questions before we No hard feelings, guys. This exercise, no hard feelings. What if more than one person picks the person that you want to give the message? <laughs> <laughs> we need to line up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you don't, 
Then we go to the second person that we didn't want to work with. Yeah, the second person, or if there's the people available, then you can chat and discuss techniques with someone else who didn't get it. You can join someone and give them the message. <laughs> <laughs> you can share your tips. We both don't want you on our team. <laughs> There's a little bit Yeah. All of your good friends of mine, I don't know when to choose. We spoke about that long term relationship, you have lunch to, to reconcile. Yeah. <laughs> Extra <laughs> exactly, detox. projections of um, <laughs> what's going to happen. But now, for the challenging part of challenging messages, the delivery. So please try and match up with one person you haven't selected. And if you don't, uh, if you're unable to, if, to speak to that person because you're speaking to someone else, then uh, find someone else to speak to and just discuss with each other uh, what your approach would have been and what you were going to say. So let's spend the next five minutes delivering some challenging messages. <laughs> 